Hey YouTube, Got That Funk here, and uh, I want to thank you straight off the bat for clicking on this video. I don't really have that much to say. This is going to be sort of a vlog style personal update sort of a video. Um, but I want to make it when I'm in this sort of frame of mind because uh, I've been feeling pretty low for uh, a fairly long while here, uh, pretty much since the New Year's. And um, over the nearly five years that I've had my channel, a lot of people have always asked me, you know, how do you stay so upbeat and happy all the time? And the answer is I don't, you know, I mean, uh, I'm just like you, you know, every now and then I have my, my bad days or bad weeks or bad months or whatever. And, you know, I've been going through uh, a lot of shit over the past sort of six months. You know, when my relationship ended uh, in July with my girlfriend and, uh, it certainly was not easy uh, making the transition away from that. I had a lot of support and help from various different friends who gave me a place to live and a lot of emotional support as well and stuff like that. And I can be nothing but eternally grateful uh, for their compassion and their friendship. Um, but every single time I, 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 I seem to take like one or two steps forward, I get knocked back like three or four. So. This has just been one hell of a fucking challenge. This has been in incredibly taxing on me, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. Um, I just, I, I, I'm not even going to list all of this shit that's happened, but suffice to say, every time I think things are starting to look up, boom, here it comes, boot in the face. And uh, it's just not very easy. And, um, I'm going through this phase right now where I'm just thinking, fuck me, man, just stop the world, I want off, you know, just fucking, just leave me alone, right, I, I, I you know, <laughs> but there's a couple of reasons why I've sort of got this thing going on, you know, I started a new career after my shop closed, I was unemployed for several months, and then I decided to retrain myself and get into a different sort of lifestyle, you know, change the direction of my life, and do something a that I've never done before and be something that might help me improve myself and so what I did was I got into the construction industry first as a laborer and currently I drive a telescopic camper forklift which looks like this now a telehandler um, that's the, the kind of a machine which unloads uh, goods off of uh, lorries and um, you know, puts it various different places around the yards. We also lift up shit to people who are working at the tops of buildings and crap like that, you know, whatever. And the job itself, you know, driving the machine and doing the tasks on the machine that need to be done, it, it, I'm absolutely fine with that side of the job. It's the, the social aspect of construction, which is one of the reasons that I got into the game in the first place, but it's the social aspect of construction that I find most challenging. Uh, most of the construction sites I've worked on have been kind of clickish. It's not just limited to the trades, you know, sticking to their own, like for example, bricklayers will usually hang out with the bricklayers and uh, chippies will hang out with the chippies and sparkies will hang out with the sparkies and, you know, but even when they don't hang out with their own people, I mean, there's the, the sites can be very clickish, you know. In fact, uh, construction sites do remind me a lot of high school. There's actually, uh, for supposedly men's men's type work, uh, you know, you want to fall in for the stereotype anyway um it's it's just incredibly bitchy it's it, i find it very interesting how everything is always someone else's fault and uh you know when you're a forklift driver you take heat from virtually everybody on site because uh everybody thinks they can do your job easier than you can better than you can the, the fact is none of them know how so um you know they think it's just like driving a car or something when it's actually quite a lot more complicated and you've got a lot more responsibility because it would be very, very easy, if you're not being careful, to kill someone with your forklift. So, yeah, uh, it's a lot of responsibility. And I'm under a lot of pressure from various different people on site uh, to do things faster or, uh, you know, more satisfactory to, to, from their point of view or whatever. Um, but I, I took this gig on because I want to try to get over some of my issues I've got with uh, getting along with fellas, getting along with men. As long-term viewers of this channel will know, that I've never really had a lot of male friends in my life. I've got a few, obviously, um, but 
I generally speaking don't really connect very well with men. Now on the construction sites, you know, I don't make any effort to dilute my personality. You know, I'm going to be me regardless, and you can take me or you can leave me based on who I really am, and that's absolutely fine. But it's difficult because a lot of these fellas just, you know, never met anybody like me, and they don't know how to take me, and therefore they either don't like me or just, you know, are bemused and and just rip the piss out of it, which is fine, I suppose, but it. You know, that doesn't make for a nice atmosphere. Um, you know, for example, I've got my, my rainbow hoodie, which you probably have seen me in if you watch this channel. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely the most colorfully dressed person on the site. Uh, when I show up for work, obviously we change uh, into work clothes so you don't get your normal shit dirty. But yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm still me. And I can't, for example, engage in the canteen with the conversations when the conversations are about you know, sport, or football, or whatever. I don't give a fuck, and I, I never have, and I'm not going to pretend to be interested in things I'm not interested in, so I'll just be sat in the corner playing a Sudoku puzzle or whatever, um, and not really getting that involved. So it's kind of a, it's not necessarily a moot point, because I am sort of slowly but surely trying to establish relationships with some of the guys I work with, some of the less objectionable fellows that I work with, and, um, the other forklift driver on site is a Rastafarian fellow, and I really get on really well with him, thank goodness. Um, you know, it would be really, really difficult if I didn't have any allies on site, because it is incredibly bitchy. It's like high school. Uh, the different cliques just constantly bitch about each other, um, and everybody thinks they can do everyone else's job better than they can. And that's uh, certainly also true of the forklift, so there's a lot of pressure. And you, you couple that with the fact that this year I was asked to get off the boat, uh, which, you know, is fair enough, I suppose. You know, my friend Jen, she gave me sanctuary and assistance and compassion and love for four months. So she's my best friend, and I'm extremely grateful. But I wasn't really quite in the position to, to move off the boat yet. I'm not 100% secure. At least I don't feel secure in, in the job I'm working right now. Um, but it is what it is, and I had to get off because, you know, A, it's her boat, and she's got every right to say, look, I want this place back to myself. Uh, and B, I didn't really like living on the boat anyway. I mean, I like living with her as a roommate, but the boat itself was too much like camping. I mean, you know, we didn't have any mains electricity. There was no internet. Uh, so we didn't have any refrigerator that was uh, reliable. We didn't have, uh, sometimes, quite often, we didn't have any hot running water, and sometimes we didn't even have any running water. Uh, which makes your uh, life less than comfortable, put it that way. And I'm forced to admit that I'm addicted to certain creature comforts that uh, living without just didn't make me very happy. So, so that happened this year. And then the other day I found out that my ex-girlfriend's got herself a new boyfriend. And I shouldn't give a shit, but I do. And when I found out, I felt like I got kicked in the guts. And the thing is, you know, I left her, and I never had any intention of getting back with her or anything like that. And I genuinely, genuinely mean this when I say, you know, I want her to be happy. I want her to move on. I do. But that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, you know. Um, she's not exactly an easy person to impress. And so for someone to have been deemed worthy in her eyes of uh, being granted the title boyfriend, you know, he must be pretty special. And, you know, uh, my ego is such, I suppose, that I just hoped that she'd never really meet anybody that she thought was as special as me. You know? And isn't that selfish and horrible? You know, it's not really a very nice thing if you actually think about it. But it is what it is, you know? I'm not going to pretend I'm someone else. I'm, this is me. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it kind of sucked. It kind of... It, 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 you know, I felt winded for like an entire day. And, uh, you know, I'm more or less all right now. I, you know, it's just, I don't know. Sometimes you, you, you don't want to, you, you, you want to let go because you know you have to, but you don't want to let go because your emotions say no, no, no. You know, you, there's still some love there. And, uh, the fact is, there's quite a lot of love there. You know, I think as a person, she's amazing. She just wasn't 
good for me as a girlfriend, you know, and that's really hard to reconcile emotionally, you know, and uh, even though it's been six months since I moved out, I, uh, I think about her every day, you know, and there's loads of things I miss about her on a daily basis, you know, just the way she smiled, the way she laughed at my jokes, you know, the way her skin felt, and stuff like that, just, you know, I, I want to, I want to let go of how much I liked that stuff, the thing is, that's not true, I do, I, I don't, <laughs> there's a conflict inside me between what I know is good for me and what I feel like I want and all that kind of shit, you know, and this is why I'm not really in a place to, uh, to move on on the level that she obviously has done, and, uh, you know, that's a really a, a kind of a sobering conclusion. I am, um, I found it interesting though, one of the things that happened to me when I found out that she had a boyfriend was I had uh, this sort of rebound impulse. I didn't act on it, of course, because, uh, you know, I'm, I suppose, mature enough to recognize the impulse for what it was, and I'm not just going to be a slave to these kinds of impulses, but suffice to say that the first thing that occurred to me when I found out she had a boyfriend was I, I immediately wanted to go out and get laid, you know? Um, and I was amazed at a, the, re the reaction was that, and then, and B, just how strong I felt. Like, I, I really felt it would make me feel better if I got some trim. And, you know, I don't find that kind of thing particularly challenging, uh, but it's not something I ever actually do. I don't actually ever go out looking to get laid. You know, it, you know when I'm single, I'm open to, you know, invitation, as it were. Uh, but I certainly don't try and make those invitations happen. That's just not how I roll. You know, my attitude is, if it finds me, then fine, but I'm not going looking for it kind of thing. But the impulse was pretty strong. That helped that I went out with some friends on Friday night, and uh, it was uh, me and one of my male friends and two female friends. And we had great times together and all that kind of thing. And just, just a bit of female attention, I reckon, was enough to sort of assuage my my yearning without actually having to go all the way which is uh you know that's partly i think because i was aware of my response and it was not necessarily healthy or wholesome for me to pursue it so yeah she was gorgeous anyway um i think i better wrap this video up i didn't really get anywhere with it but i just wanted to sort of log a, a personal update um so yeah, as I've sort of alluded to, and as you can probably tell from my background here, I am in a new place to live. Uh, I do have internet access in my abode now, thank goodness, and I will be back to making videos at least three or four or five days a week, maybe more, uh, once I get back into the swing of it. Um, since most of my channel used to be uh, response videos, it's a bit tricky now because fewer people that I watch make videos on a regular basis and I don't really even bother with videos that I find contentious anymore. So I don't, uh, the whole response video thing is a bit more tricky, but it's something I do want to get back into. And, um, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. If there's anything you'd like me to, to talk about, uh, feel free to suggest it. I'm not guaranteeing I'll make a video about it, but, you know, whatever. And I also want to get back into sort of uh, more creative videos. Uh, but at the moment, I'm kind of at a loss as to which direction to go with that as well. Um, I do want to get back into the craft of making videos, though. I find uh, YouTube, in 2009, when I first started um, five years ago, uh, it was very therapeutic for me because I was going through some nasty emotional shit when I first started my channel as well. And YouTube was what helped pull me out of it. Um, so, yeah. And... Speaking of which, uh, I think on February 16th is my five-year anniversary on YouTube, and I was kind of vexed as to what to do for a sort of anniversary video. Um, if you've got any ideas, uh, feel free to voice them. I'd like to hear them, actually. Um, I just don't know what I could do. I, I, I know I can't do like a collaboration-style video because I just don't have the kind of clout on YouTube that I used to for that sort of thing. Once upon a time when I announced to people that I was going to be setting up a collab video, some people would be queuing up to be a part of it. 
And uh, nowadays, it's more like uh, you can't get people to do it if you drag them kicking and screaming. You know, you have to beg and plead. And even then, you know, half the people who say they will just don't. So have more than half. So it's a bit, it's a bit pulling teeth type uh, painful, but you know, I never say never. In fact, I do intend to do collab videos uh, in the future if I can find uh, topics and, and participants that are compatible. Because it's a kind of video I like to make, so yeah. But as far as my anniversary goes, should I make any kind of an anniversary video? Um, I could do a Got That Funk mashup, which is the only thing I can think of. But frankly, most of my better content is really old. So, um, you know, I want to get back into making more substantial videos in terms of the content that I talk about. Because um, while I was in my relationship for those two years, I didn't really make very many videos of substance. And uh, that's something I'd like to rectify. Anyway, my goodness, look at the time. Uh, it's almost 16 minutes in. If you've watched this far, I want to thank you sincerely for sticking around and uh, clicking on my videos. And uh, if you have watched this far, Leave me a message in the description that says, Tommy from the Bronx is the motherfucking it. All right. <sighs> yeah, I've, I've been feeling pretty low, but um, I just want to remind you that uh, my catchphrase is something I try and live up to, and it's something I'd like you to reconsider, considering my current frame of mind. May all your ups and downs be ups.